My brother Dai Landers and all persons <coughs> listening, a pleasant good day and God's blessings to each and every one. Today is indeed an auspicious occasion where we have come together as our Virgin Islands party to welcome Honorable Alvra Maduro Keynes as part of the Virgin Islands party family. I wish to thank Honorable Alvra Maduro Keynes for the confidence she has expressed in me as Premier in my, and in the government and in our vision for the territory. I would like to welcome her to our team and each member of our team also welcomes Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes. It takes a great deal of courage to make the bold step that Honorable Maduro Keynes has taken and I would like to congratulate her on her strength. This is a very important time in the political, social and economic life of the BVI. There are some serious storm clouds gathering on the horizon and uh, as individuals, as leaders and as decision makers, we need to step back and appreciate the big picture of what our territory is facing and what is heading towards us. Our financial services sector continues to be relentlessly attacked by international forces that would like, the, that would like our revenue to continue to fall off and have it for themselves. I've already reported that in 2019, the territory lost about $30 million in revenue due to a decline in registration directly linked to policies and conditions that were forced upon us without even the courtesy of asking us for our views. Events such as these threaten our ability to adequately rebuild in a faster rate, to upgrade and maintain our infrastructure and to provide for the needs of citizens in a more timely manner. It affects the quality of life of our citizens and their aspiration both as individuals and as the people of a territory. The political autonomy of Virgin Islanders continues to be frequently bombarded by attacks as well. There are forces working to undermine and to roll back the work done by our forefathers in achieving self-rule which gives us Virgin Islanders a say. I'll be, albeit limited, in ensuring that the values, aspirations, and cultural identity remain alive. That is why your government has set our vision on the transformation of the Virgin Islands into a leading regional economy by 2025 through entrepreneurship, innovation, and local and foreign investment. That is why your government is saying that we must diversify our economy foundation, our economic foundation so that all our eggs are not placed in one basket. That is why your government is pushing to ensure that our people have requisite education and training to open companies, to manage companies, and to be globally competitive. That is why your government is standing firm that Virgin Islanders must be able to tangibly benefit from the projects that would be undertaken through the UK's offer of loan guarantee for BVI hurricane recovery. BVI businesses and skilled workers must be able to deliver quality and value for money so that this money will not pass through the territory like the runoff from a rain shower, but it will soak into an economic system, nourish our soil, and like a vitamin shot in the arm, boost our supporting industries and sectors. Your government is legally focused on this task. And we want all patriotic citizens to join forces, to hold hands with us, and for us to walk forward as a united territory. I, Andrew L. Tufoy, Chairman of the Virgin Islands Party, and also Premier of the Virgin Islands, I'm extremely glad that Honorable Alva Maduro Keynes recognizes the broader issues and threats that are confronting us and that she has decided to join us as a government and as a Virgin Islands Party family and to work with us productively to ensure the well-being of present and future generations of Virgin Islanders. There's a lot of work that needs to be done and we need as many hands on deck as we can get. Your government is willing to work with anyone who has good intention and who is willing to work with us 
in the pursuit of our vision for res resilient and prosperous Virgin Islands. I thank you, and I say welcome to Honorable Alvar Maduro Cades, and may God continue to bless and watch over the people of the Virgin Islands. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I will allow for a few words to be said by the newest member of the Virgin Islands Party and the government, the representative of the 6th District, for three consecutive terms, and many more now to come, Honorable Alvaro Maduro Gaines. Good afternoon to everyone. So. My dear fellow Virgin Islanders, especially my constituents of District 6, a pleasant good day. Over the past several weeks, I have been in deep contemplation and prayer over the challenges facing our territory and our people, particularly in the context of the international business climate. I am convinced that our territory needs all hands on deck, working together to overcome these threats. The Virgin Islands must come first. Virgin Islanders must come first. Having considered the vision for the territory that has been laid out by our Honorable Premier Andrew A. Foy in his 2020 budget address, I believe that it, this is a plan that can make strides in positioning the BVI where it needs to be to secure the present and the future for all Virgin Islanders. And therefore, this is a plan that I believe is deserving of the fullest support for all patriotic citizens. I have known the Premier Honorable Andrew Foy for many years, and I believe he is firmly rooted in his philosophy and his values. I believe he is a genuine, productive leader, and that he is serious and committed towards the transformation of the BVI and the local economy, and therefore has earned my confidence. I have seen the progress that our present government and its leaders have made over the last 11 months progress that has been made despite obstacles. I have looked at their programs, such as those that will help our people to more easily access industry training and academic qualification, to develop and pursue business opportunities, and to leap into the arena of digital business. And I believe that this is the direction that our territory must be heading. With this in mind, I wish to advise the national population of the BVI that I, Alvaro Maduro, King's representative of the people of the 6th Electoral District, have tendered my resignation from my former political party and have decided to join the Virgin Islands Party and become a member of the sitting government in the House of Assembly, and to pledge my support to the Honorable Andrew Foy and his government in the furtherance and pursuit of the, vis the vision of transforming the Virgin Islands into a leading regional economic and to economy and to the uplifting of Virgin Islanders across the territory. I wish to emphasize that this decision has come out of deep thoughts and prayers over a prolonged period. I have not been made any promises or offered any inducement, nor have I asked for any. I simply want that which is best for our territory, and I believe that what is best for the BVI at this time is for all patriotic Virgin Islanders to be working together on one common goal, which is the betterment and security of these islands, which we call home and all our people and no strict allegiance along political party lines. I look forward to working with the members of the government towards building a better, stronger BVI and to, towards creating an enabling environment for our people. May God continue to bless our Virgin Islands. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Honorable, Al uh, Honorable Alvar Maduro Keynes, the representative for the 6th District, for her kind words um, that she has expressed and also informed in the most respectful and professional manner about her 
decision to join the Bajanas Party, to join the sitting government, to strengthen and to uphold the vision that we have for the people of the territory, which has been clearly articulated in the budget address and will be clearly ventilated this year in many forms through legislative amendments, uh, through new legislation, and through many other areas. So I want to make sure uh, that now we open up the floor to the media for any questions you may have, um, and uh, we will have that be directed. So please, um, media, you can now um, ask any questions. Good afternoon, Zan Lewis, ZB Very Radio. Ms. Medulkins, you said that you have been looking into this issue with, with deep thought and praise. And also during the, when you start in your address, you address your constituents. Have you had any talks with your constituents on this issue before you made this decision? And also, when did you resign, actually? Yes, Mr. Zain, I did have talks. Of course, I can't speak with everyone in the district, um, but I did have talks with some of my supporters and express my views and opinions, and they were in agreement. My resignation was done today. Pleasant good afternoon. Ron Grant of Tweet for Media. My question is to the Honorable Alvar Maduro Keynes. Piggybacking off of what Zan asked you in regards to any consultations that you may or may not have uh, held with your constituents and members, now that you've made your decision moving forward, what can you assure the residents of the 6th District, uh, your uh, members of the electorate who have elected you just 11 months ago under the National Democratic Party, what can you assure them now um, that they might have some thoughts in their minds as to representation, but what can you assure them now that you have moved over to the Virgin Islands Party? Well, moving over to the Virgin Islands Party does not change me as a representative. It doesn't change me as a person. I will still be the same Alvaro Maduro Keynes doing the work for the people and I do believe I would be able to accomplish more right now with moving with the Virgin Islands Party. Kathy. I, I might add, <coughs> if I can add, uh, in that one thing Honorable Am 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 can say is that we have been trying to be fair to the, every district as much as possible, given the resources that was, have been, has been available. So, and you would hear, have heard me say that in the House of Assembly many times, we cannot give every district, including mine, everything that you, you want or need, but we try as much as possible to have a balance um, in terms of the distribution of the resources. So, although Honorable Abraham Duru Keynes was in the opposition, we still look at it as an area inside of the territory, one of the districts in the territory that must be looked after, and so was um, any other district, and we'll be doing so um, Continuously, uh, even even with Honorable Alvin Maduro Keynes joining, we will not be uh, what you call politically victimizing a district uh, because you're in the government. I sat in the opposition for many years, and I saw that happen in my case. And I always got get up in the house and I said that I will never be a proponent of that. And, and if you watch at the different districts of what has taken place, uh, one would recognize that, that that has been the case um, for the most part. We still have a lot of work to do, um, but but other than the districts, which is important, we realize that as a territory, we have a lot of building to do, and the vision, as she rightfully stated in her statement, is what she has joined on to, to help us to improve our, our, our economy, um, build our revenue, and also diversify the economy so that everyone in the territory, District 6, District 1, well, from District 1 to 9, will have a rightful place in this economy, in the territory, and have a better way of life. And that's the bottom line. Kathy Richards, JTV. Uh, my question to Honorable <coughs> Alvaro Maduro Keynes. Uh, while the government would have been in place for <coughs> over uh, just about 10 months or so, uh, you have repeatedly said that you've been having the full cooperation of the Virgin Islands Party-led government in getting what uh, is needed to be done through you for your district. Uh, so with having that cooperation, why the necessity to switch party? 
a good question, um, Kathy. After I, I have met with the Virgin Islands Party and went through their programs, a list of programs and um, different you know, um, projects that they want to do to move the country forward, you know, I felt I would be better able to more work hands-on with them, and I want to work hands-on with them to get these projects and get the, this vision um, moving forward. And I think I'll be better able to do that sitting with them. Okay, one question to you, Premier. I don't know if I missed this in the earlier stages. I was a bit late. Uh, but what would be Honorable Kane's position now uh, on the government side? Honorable Keynes have stated clearly that she came to help the government work. There are only a certain amount of positions in there and all of the positions in terms of, of whether it's a, be a minister or junior minister, those are taken. But there are still positions um, in terms of being a member of the government. Every voice uh, has a voice and it has to be heard. And in doing this vision, it's not only us in the government. We are unconventional government. We're going to be stretching out to every single district rep, every at large, although they're on our side, mm -hmm. asking for your input on how to make your district and the territory better, not only in terms of, of cleaner and better, but also in terms of how do you see you can bring revenue in from your district area that can help in the overall picture and also how you can help with the overall picture. So that is one of the things that we're going to be doing a little differently. If people truly say that they want to work together, then we're going to put the opportunity out there. Of course, I always tell persons you can't replace listenership with leadership. So after we are finished listening and then we are finished um, respecting each other's ideas, then we have to make a decision on what all we will be able to implement. But if you rightfully see, we have a clear vision for 2020 then we have a lot of work to do. Um, today, we actually, in the government side, did something that is historic. We called for a meeting at the later of the last year with the governor and his group and all the public officers, the permanent secretaries, deputies, mm -hmm. finance and planning officers, the communication teams, so that we could meet with them as a government and sell them our vision and get them aboard so that everyone could understand that we only could go in one direction if we are all owing in the same direction. We can't be rowing in different directions. So we will concentrate on the areas that unite us. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them that um, one time I read in a book, which is, is key, um, if you ever get locked out of your house and you don't have your keys, um, you just continue to speak to the lock because communication is key. <laughs> so we, 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 we believe in communication. And um, I, that there I see is one in which honorable Alvaro Maduro KNC in the vision and the way that, that we're going to communicate to get the territory built for all involved. Uh, Malika McPherson, the Island Sun newspaper. Honorable Maduro Keynes, in your opening uh, introduction there, you said a line. Can you explain what that means? No strict allegiance along party line. What did you mean by that? Simply to say that the time has come where we have to rise about party politics. It should be about the people and the country mm -hmm. and, and not party. Party politics sometimes helps to destroy a country. Just to follow up, why was that part of your contemplation? Are you, were you hindered by party politics? No, I didn't say that. No, no, no. <laughs> just asking why it was, you said in your no, contemplation. It's, it's just, you um, you consider that you wanted something that was no strict allegiance along party uh, Because line. I know I would eventually get some backlash from certain persons, and I, tried, I was trying to explain that you have to leave the party politics alone. If you're generally interested in your country and your people, you have to think about party politics and make decisions that's about party politics. Good day, uh, Mrs. Keynes. Congratulations. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just curious. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned speaking to certain persons within your community, your constituency, about your impending decision. What were some of their comments, and were, did you also speak to other people um, 
other colleagues um, within the political sphere. Well, I spoke to my family first, and um, they assured they, you know, they continue support for me. Whatever I do, they believe in me, and they will follow. The majority of the persons I spoke with, my core, some of my core supporters, of course, I couldn't speak with everyone in the district. They did not have an issue with it. And most of them said, we are supporting you as Alvaro Maduro Keynes, as our representative. It could be NDP, VIP, LMNOP. We are supporting you. <laughs> we are supporting you as our district rep. Ms. Maduro Keynes, you said it's time to rise above party politics. A few months ago, there was an election, and you said that you're not going to switch, you're not going to plug it out, you're going to stay with the Virgin Islands Party, with the NDP party. 11, 11, 11, months, 11 months after, you're claiming to rise above the party politics. And, um, and also to looking out for your people. I'm concerned to know when these discussions started with the Virgin Islands Party. And you made mention about the plan and the program of the Virgin Islands Party. Weren't you aware of the plans and the programs of the Virgin Islands Party 10 or 11 months ago? Why, why this, this question is from Mr. Durkin, sir. What's that? You can't ask and answer. Oh, um, these and the plans of the Virgin Islands Party um, were, you were aware of the plans 11 months ago. Why not before? Why now? Why you didn't not, take that decision earlier? You know better than that. Not in depth. Not in depth. You hear it in the budget, but you, as an opposition member, we don't see the plans in depth. And you know that. Not only that, then, um, the, the, in fairness, let me help, um, help you, Zen. In fairness to the member, <clears throat> the first budget that we brought was a transition budget that was already in place. There was not much that we could have done with that when we passed it in April. And one of the things that we said when we were stood up there as a government, and m most persons said that it would be crazy was when we said we were going to pass the 2020 budget before the end of 2019, and that was in April. The government of the day has passed two budgets in less than 10 months, and there are those who want to don't play that. But in any financial world, that's a very big deal. On top of that, for the first time with this new budget that we passed in December, in 13, by end, it was the first time that we have seen the speech for the throne, which is the legislative agenda of the sitting government, read by the, done by the premier's office, of course, discussed with every um, minister. And I was telling my members that this is the first time that all members mm -hmm. actually had an input and uh, uh, put together. It's a tough document to do because when you have seven other members and everyone has a lineup, you, you know, you have to pace yourself because you don't want to put things inside our legislative agenda that you're not going to get to just to sound good with the speech. But it's the first time that the legislative agenda has been tied into a vision that was tied into the budget speech. And as I said, we also tie that into a working document right now for each and every ministry in the government. So they know for the entire year what legislations are going to be needed. They know what policies are going to be needed. And as I said today, uh, just uh, about, a, about a half an hour before we came to this press conference, we did what was historic by meeting all of the senior public officials with the governor, with the finance officers, to say, listen, let us become oneness in purpose. Let us stop concentrating on the areas that divide us and get the oneness of purpose for the people. Now I'm saying all of that to say, um, Brother Zan, is that with the visions that have been clearly articulated, 
especially coming into this last budget that has been passed, is what Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes more has seen herself aligning with. Because it's not just for this year, but it's for, for time to come. So it is unfair in terms of timing <coughs> excuse me, to match her into saying she should have made that decision earlier. Versus no, what no. Then I know Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes for many years. And anybody that sees the light and don't go to it is willful. So she saw the light of the vision and she came to the light. And I want to welcome her home. Uh, Honorable Keynes, you said that it was only today that you submitted your resignation to the National Democratic Party. And uh, my question to you is, uh, did you give them an indication prior to submitting today that you are intending to leave? Yeah. If not, why not? To paraphrase it, the one might be somebody on the mic. No, I, I, didn't. I have voiced my opinion about how the party structure is now and, and not working, but I did not give an indication. It was just something that I decided to do. Okay, so how long it is that you have indicated to Premier and his team that you are going to be coming aboard with them? <laughs> well, I'll put it this way. Um, with due respect to, to Ms. Keynes, uh, because the questions are more than fair, but there's never a perfect time to do anything. And you never let the perfect become the enemy of the greater good. One thing I could say is this resignation will not end up in the courts. <laughs> <laughs> she has resigned. And one of the things that I spoke to um, Honorable Keynes about that we agreed is, I said, just like the law does with anyone since, I don't want to hear anything about where you are coming from. And I told her that I don't want to discuss it. I want to know if you want to join because of the vision. And she said, yes. She aligns herself with the vision that the Virgin Islands Party has. She didn't ask me for a road. She didn't ask me for a wall. She said she wants to assign herself with a vision. She did say clearly that she doesn't want her people in the 6th district to be treated any less. And that's only fair of any district representative. And the truth be told is that the people of the 6th District love Honorable Maduro Keynes. And the truth be told that the 6th District also has a portion of it that uh, some very strong Virgin Islands Party supporters. So when you marry those two together, you have an even stronger footing for us to move forward together in a marriage made in heaven for a time such as now. So. Honorable Maduro Keynes' uh, resignation, as she stated, um, was submitted. However, it was submitted, is submitted, and she's now a member of the Vodnance Party and part of the government. If she submitted it two minutes before we got on, on the air, it's submitted. If she submitted it while, she was talk, while I was talking before I spoke, it's submitted. The bottom line is, it is submitted. <laughs> and she's now a member of the Vodnance Party and part of the government. And as one member in the opposition rightfully says every election, ain't no stopping her now. Uh, Joey Waldinger with the BVI Beacon here. Uh, Honorable M Madero Keynes, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering if you've heard any reactions from your uh, party, former party members yet, and if so, uh, what were they? No, not as yet. I haven't spoken to anyone as yet. I want you to ask all the questions because, you know, when I was in the opposition, I never, ever limit you all the questions. Like, we came to Premier and I'm doing the same. You can't be private in the public. Premier, good afternoon to yes, you. Um, just want to find out, can we expect any more of this um, um, 
announcements. Are <laughs> any other opposition <laughs> legislators speaking to you about joining the VIP? Well, that I know. In prep and UG, I go through my mind of questions that I could possibly be asked. Me. And I must say, yes, I never thought I would hear that question. My answer to that is very simple. Anyone who feels in their heart that they can share in the vision that we want to build the territory because we have a lot of challenges, and they feel that they could put away any differences, and they want to sit down and talk with us, talk with me as a leader, and they're coming to add value, not coming to see what they can get personally, but come in the manner that Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes have come and said, look, I want to help. I come for the territory. It's not an easy thing to do, but I come. As the leader, I would speak with my colleagues, and, and once they agree, I welcome them home. It takes a lot to say and do what Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes is doing. But if you notice some of the time I answer some of the questions, not because she can, cannot, but I'm not going to let you all jump on a, a woman like this. <laughs> because she's very quiet and sometimes people take her meekness for weakness. But it isn't that. She's a team player. But more so she loves the Virgin Islands. So my answer is I can't say that we have an open mm -hmm. sepulchre so to say that whoever, whosoever will may come. It depends on what mindset they're coming with and if they share the vision. And once that is so, that they're more than welcome to come to the Bosnian's party. One time our slogan was opportunities for all. And it's still that moving together in one direction. But you did not answer the question, though, in terms of are any other opposition legislators speaking to you about this? I, I don't know if any speaking to me. <laughs> They may be speaking to others, they may not be speaking to one at all. But what I'm saying is, in case they want to speak, once they have oneness in mind, then we'll be willing to listen. Because the country is what comes first. And, and Honorable Album de Gru did not switch for political mileage. She switched for territory strength. And that's important to note. Honorable Maduro Keynes, um, you started off by talking about how concerned you are about the future of the BVI. And then you went on to state that you had the discussion with the Virgin Isles Party, and after you saw the projects, you were convinced. Can you give us an idea of one or two of the projects that convinced you? <laughs> the, um, the programs. Um, the programs, uh, what would benefit the young people in helping them to become business owners? And of course, we we are exploring and we'll go into the um, marijuana, which is for health health reasons, not you know just for, for recreation. Um, so those had sparked my interest, you know. Um, along with the other, some other um, revenue raising, um, things that I didn't know about, that I never knew existed before. So I was really glued to what I saw in the different, pro different programs that are being offered. Premier, rather, if the, Ms. Maduro Kings can answer this question, please, sir. <laughs> um, um, the, yes, sir. thank you very much, sir. This question is Mr. Kent. You think it is fair, Mr. Kent, you would have been holding discussions with the Virgin Islands Party. You have been with another party for a number of years. You are now sitting on the opposition, working with an opposition group. But while you have been in discussion with the Virgin Islands Party about moving to the party in the interest of the territory, you have not had any discussions with a party or members of a party you have been with and with an opposition group. You say up to now, um, you resign today. You have not had any discussions with them to find out the programs, you're dissatisfied with the programs, 
but they just resign like this. You think it is fair with the people to whom you are working with and a party you have been with for a long time? Do you think, <laughs> what's unfair about it? No, no. I'm asking you the question, uh, Ms. Okay, so like I'm asking answer. you the question. <laughs> I'm asking you, you have been holding discussions to join another <clears throat> party, but a party you have been with for a number of years in an opposition group you have sat with for 11 months, you did not see it fit to talk with them and, see, and say that you're dissatisfied, you, you don't like the grounds to which they're moving, I'm going to try and join the Virgin Islands Party. You just quit like this, and um, you think it's fair to them and as an individual who represents the 6th District? I can't, I can't let you jump on my new member in the direction you're going like that. Let me help, let me help you something here. What is fair is relative. That's first of all. Because what we might determine as fair, you might not. And at the same time, when someone reaches to the mindset that they want to make a change because of what they have seen on one side for a time and what they have seen on another, and they have resigned and move on, no matter how it is done, Patting ways is always a difficult thing. Going into new pastures is always, in new areas, is always a difficult thing. But at the same time, too, as she stated, she, saw, she found herself in oneness of mind with the vision. Now she has not committed political adultery like you're suggesting. She has been loyal to where she was. And she said that this is time that she wants to move on to the party, the Bordenlanders party, because she sees the vision. She feels it aligned because she has a passion for young people, and she feels that it's going along that line. When Honorable Maduro Keynes came and she spoke, she did not come and speak about anything else other than her passion to help the people of the territory, especially young people. Yes, her people of her six, she mentioned them, but she said she, she talked about 1,000 jobs in 1,000 days, as you heard her say how we can be able to create more entrepreneurs. These are things she said herself. Well, the reason I'm saying that, Zan, is that some of what I hear you saying that she said is you saying it, saying that she said it, but she didn't say that. So I wanted to clear it up, because what happened is that she's not a nut without a shell. She's come to a group where she's a nut with a shell. And we believe in protecting each other in terms of making sure that we keep people laser focused. The concerns, what you raise, are legitimate, and I commend you as a news person. But we're going to remain laser focused that it's time to help the territory move in a new direction, diversify the economy to help the people. So I want to make sure that that is clear. So if you ask her that 50 times, you will get this answer 50 times, because this is what it's about. The things of old, that's, if you adopt your philosophy there, what you're telling me then, is like saying that you, you were the biggest sinner, gone to church and you get saved and you come out and you do an interview and ask well, how you get saved. <laughs> this afternoon you're in the dance hall, what are you doing saved now? That's not how grace works. When grace comes, it changes you one time and you're going a new road. And this is where Honorable Alva Maduro Keynes is going. She's taking a new road with the Bosnianas Party. Yes. It's gonna have bumps, but we're gonna iron them out as a family. I'm glad to see a woman take this stand. And how many women take this stand? That gives the Bosnianas Party three women now in politics. And I'm proud of that. It shows that we believe in equal opportunity. I personally think that women are always strong. I don't know why people tell me that they need to take up their place. Mm -hmm. I grew up with some strong women. They were always in charge. I was the one not in charge. So when I hear this, I just get confused. But um, mm -hmm. my, my, my mother was um, the man and the woman of the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sisters were the one in charge. I come out to, to women taking their rightful place. So I don't understand it when I hear people saying that women need to be more assertive. They were always in, um, in charge. 
even in the days of the plantation, they were the ones who were keeping the house. They were always in charge. So I just want them to do not dim their light and their brightness for anyone. So I'm really proud of what Honorable Evan Maduro Kane's done. And the party is going to walk with her through the 6th District. Whether it is me or other members, we're going to walk with her through the 6th District so we can meet the people, even those who are not happy with the move she made and said, well, tell us what have you not happy. Let's see if we could fix it. We're not going to leave or go home from here and just sing Akuda Matara and hope that everything is all right. It'll work just that. So we're going to go in Bagas Bay. We're going to go up Bellevue. We're going to go up every um, Puzzle. We're going to remember all the areas, and we're going to go with her. She's a new member of the family. So I just think I need to put that in there so the people of the 6th District don't feel that she would have not have the same attention as those who were there for us. For save, in last save in church, all save. And that's the same thing with the VIP. Okay, Premier, I, you just alluded to the fact that you now have uh, three women in the, the government, on the government side. I think this is a historic uh, feat. I don't recall ever knowing of three women in government at once. Uh, but this lends to the work that, that we as women would be looking forward to these three strong women, as you said. Uh, is there a plan, is there, is there a program that is being worked on to tackle some of the major issues that are affecting women, single parent, young girls uh, in our society? Premier, you have heard what was said at the opening of the law year by the Chief Justice as well as the Resident Justice about the issues that are affecting our women in society. Three women for the first time in the history, now in government, how are we going forward? Well, as you can see, we're going forward in one direction. <laughs> because the Vosnanas party is the one with the three women. And yes, we have to tackle those issues more. And that is one of the reasons why we all have to swallow our ego and I swallow mine to get together all the senior uh, officials and everybody today. And I want to answer your question in this way because the issues of single mother and even those who marry but still single because the man ain't pulling his weight, sad to say, because I'm a man and I try to pull mine and I try to help my brothers along the way. It's a very serious thing because even with child support, I do not know why men go and get children and don't support them. I have an issue with that. So one of the legislation that, that, that we're going to bring forward is that soon, um, within the next uh, second quarter or so of, of this year, is that they can't leave the territory again ever till they pay off the bill. And we're going to attach their name to every single thing in government. So when they go to go pay one, say that they have to pay social security to get a contract um, with the e e government legislation that we're doing, the name will pop up that you owe inland revenue or you owe somewhere else, and you're not getting nothing until you pay up that child support and all those other things. We have to understand that when we get children, we don't support them. We be putting them to be a burden on society. And asking a lady to do all of that, to raise the children and to get monies and things, that's too much. And I don't take that lightly. And I say that to say that's one of the issues there with our single mothers. But, but not only the women um, on that, we have our, um, the, the, the Honorable Neville Smith, who's on that heavy, the Minister of Health, Honorable Kevin Malone. He is the one working on some of these legislation, and we're going to be fighting for the single mother. But the reason we met with the public service is to let them to know that your job is not so much so much about getting the salary, but it's to make sure about helping your brother, your sister, your cousin, or your friend, or your neighbor that's a single mother that needs the systems of government to be more efficient so that when they have these needs, then they come to the system, they won't be knocked about that we have a land bank so that those who will never get a dream of getting land can get land. And there are those who make fun of it when the government says we buy these different lands. But let's face it, there are those who will never be able to the banks or because they had two or three children by fathers who are not taking care of them will ever be able to buy uh, purchase land or get a home. That's where government comes in. 
And, and um, those areas, you could say, I get very passionate about them. Because when the children suffer and they start to do the wrong things, then they become a problem with the law. So there's a full de domino effect. Then some of them end up in jail. Some of them end up um, um, whether stealing or murdering. And, and it all started because they didn't have that father figure. So I would say the answer to your question is yes, we're going to do more. And we're dealing with the urgency of now with a lot of matters so that the police would have less to do with domestic violence, they would have less to do with, with, um, with, with the issues of single mothers raising children. And I'm not I a might, woman, but I answer it. I might add, um, Kathy, also I've been called upon a few mothers and um, single parents to form a group, some kind of help group for the young ladies because the pornography is at a sky high. I received some tapes, some videos the other day, and I was really appalled at the boldness of our young ladies to think that this is good. And they're performing these acts with men, men, older men. You know, and, and the boldness frightens me. You know, and I've been called by a few ladies to get some kind of group together, set up some kind of forum. It's nothing legislation can fix, but if it's proven that these men are a lot older than these ladies, then legislation can fix it. But it's rampant. It has gone sky high. I have never seen it like this. And, and I must add that legislation with the cybercrime, which we're waiting for it to be assented to, can help fix. Because when you, when you share those videos, you, you get fined or you go to jail. Mm. Because I was telling a group of people here someday, the difference with this generation versus generations of the, of the past, some people say they've gotten worse. I don't agree. I think what happened is that the past generation didn't have the WhatsApp and Facebook for you to get around. <laughs> but all four parents got 14 and 15 children, <laughs> something had to be going on. Yeah. And when you look at it, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have WhatsApp, and the neighbor got a child by the, um, the other neighbor. A lot of things went down, so don't blame this young generation saying what they're doing. The only reason now that they become more obvious is because we have Facebook, we have WhatsApp, you have, you have Instagram, um, everything, and the Twitter, and the Twitter, and it gone out one time, and then we condemn the young people forever, as if those before didn't make mistakes, as if none of us made mistakes, and then we want to keep it on the record when they smoke a little joint, and we say, let us um, um, uh, uh, expunge the records, okay. and then we want to know what, what, what you're trying to do. But when people are young, sad to say, we all make mistakes. And if we as a government don't find a way to tell, tell the, um, those even in high authority and us and to make laws and make sure that we don't condemn them forever, then what are we saying? That we perfect? And that is why some persons don't ever approve my style as premiership. I had one told me or something that we let down the standards by going into bikes and by going into to um, different things and, and they're letting down the standard of the BVI. I told them, no, we ain't letting down the standard. We bringing up the standard because you had it up there so high for yourself for so long that you left the rest of them broke, left them without hope. The aim of a government is to put hope in the people. We have a lot of challenges coming up, but we have to continue to fight together with our young people. Because if you want to see the future of the Virgin Islands, look at the young people now. You don't need a magic wand. And if we don't invest in them and also help them to get by some of their mistakes, because some of them just went and experiment, and before you know it, they either get hooked on the drug or a video come up with them in a one-time mistake, and, but then it's hell for life. All legislation have to make sure that it detours that. And I'll be checking to see when the Cyber Crime Act is um, amendment is assented to because it's needed now more than ever. These videos have started to circulate again with our young people and some, some men who have this thing as a joke because you don't see their face, but the only film, the, um, the young lady, some of them have been saying that they didn't even know bad enough they weren't supposed to be doing it, but they didn't know. And their life is shot forever. This is where legislation comes in and the assenting to of this amendment to the Cybercrime Act is more prevalent now than ever, and I'll be on it until it is. Final question is one, two, and three. 
just to follow up on your last statement there about the Cybercrime Act, the last update the media received was that it was sent back for some amending because international uh, media groups are concerned about, about aspects of it. Can you give us um, your take on, on that suggestion? I want to go through something with you very clearly. I heard that interview, and yes, I was, I was written to, and I have since subsequently written back. But I want to go through to you, the, the people listening about that amendment to the Cybercrime Act. Why, when these things happen, persons say, well, FOI is being a little pushy. The Cybercrime Amendment Act came to the Cabinet of the Virgin Islands. The Cybercrime Amendment Act was forced to go to the National Security Council of the Virgin Islands. The Cybercrime Amendment Act was told that they wanted comments from the UK on it, and it came back afterward to the National Security. The Cybercrime Amendment Act was approved by National Security to send back the Cabinet. The Cybercrime Amendment Act was approved by Cabinet and sent to the House. The Cybercrime Amendment Act was laid on the table of the House and for the first reading and it was done. The Cybercrime Amendment Act was allowed for views of the public after the first reading by the, through the social media. The Cybercrime Amendment Act in the second reading had a full debate by all the members of the House. The Cybercrime Amendment Act in the second reading, after it was finished being debated by all the members of the House, went into a special select committee of the House of Assembly. Can I tell you that anything that went into that committee never came back out before in the history of me being in politics, the special select committee? The Cybercrime Amendment Act went where there were three government members, two opposition members, and the Attorney General, and we went and we, we totally ventilated that bill, just like the other times, class by class, page by page, word by word, um, spot by spot on the page. It went, came out with a report, and it was the first time that the select committee sent a report back to the House, because normally that is called the graveyard of bills inside the select committee. Yeah. And Honorable Alvin and Lou Keynes would know what I'm saying. Nothing comes out. It came out. And when it came out, it was such a shock to the House that the law to use to get it recommitted was never used. We had to take a break to go find out what law is to use to get it back into the House. The Cybercrime Amendment Act came back into the House and did the third reading. The Cybercrime Amendment Act went into the committee stage again, where we went through wall by wall, class by class, page by page. And the Cybercrime Amendment Act was approved by the House of Assembly unanimously yeah. and sent for ascension. Now you tell me that this was the most ventilated bill in the history of the Virgin Islands. What could possibly pop up that should not have been seen before by any entity, even those who had concerns now about and sent it to it? When everybody had a chance to deal with it from our onset. It was nothing that was speed up or rushed. And yes, some concerns were named and I wrote back. And that bill needs to be assented to because while we are playing games, young people's lives are being destroyed, videos are still going around. So yes, some concerns are being made and I respect the freedom of the media. And, but at the same time, research has shown that the media too has to be held accountable for some of what it prints. It's not saying that the media cannot print. It's saying if the media or anybody who disseminates incorrect information, the fine will be high. Now some of you in the media might say, well, that's a little high. But how do you repair a man's reputation when you finish destroying it? What costs could you put on to his reputation? And even if you say sorry, how does that irrevocable damage be dealt with? So yes, the fines were higher than normal. Yes, the penalties were higher than normal. But the problem what we have is worse than normal. And to deal with an unconventional problem, you have to do an unconventional solution. The only people need to worry about the crime, Cyber Crime Amendment Act is those who intend to be malicious. Whether it be the media or it be the regular citizen in the BVI. So I am confident 
that the most democratic process has been taken place through that Cyber Crime Amendment Act, and it should be assented to. What's the problem? Who um, play games? Well, I wouldn't call them. I would have to take it back as games. I would say I want the Cyber Crime Amendment Act assented to for the betterment of the people of the Virgin Islands. It went through every facet. And you all, being the media, research and see if every step that I've said took place. And tell me, if the alarm bell shouldn't have gone off with those who are legal and otherwise, while all these stages were being taken place. I don't know, you'll have to tell me. But today is not a day for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just was venting. Today is a day when the entire cyber world know that Honorable Alva Maduro Queens has joined the vision of the Voice Nines Party. And I think that that's, we have exhausted the questions. You had a last one, my dear? Yes, just, just Being that you are a woman, I will allow it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's a question from one, um, someone who is looking on. Um, it may be too soon to, find, to ask, however, I'll ask it anyway. Um, Bear in mind that Mrs. Keynes was, um, albeit for a short time, um, a junior minister. Um, will she, at some point, be your deputy? I rebuke them seeds of <laughs> the confusion. <laughs> them is confusion seeds. Confusion seeds. Yes, sir. The Virgin party ain't in that. No. She come help us work. Yes, sir. She come help us work. And that's the end of, the, that's the end of that. That's confusion seed. That's typical of asking me that if I marry to my woman, if I'm an eye on somebody else. No. <laughs> no. She's in this marriage and you'll be loyal to it. Loyal to the cause. Let's just call it that and stop going down the road. I know some people don't like the examples I use, but those are confusion seeds. So I rebuke them in Jesus' name. But I thank you for the question. <laughs> so what I would like to send out to everybody is that today is a new day in the Virgin Islands. Honorable Alvaro Maduro Keynes is now a member of the government. Yes, sir. The sixth district can rest assured that they'll be seeing all of us from now into the next two weeks. We coming through, not probably as one big group, but with her one by one, to show that we in solidarity with her. That don't mean that we're not coming to the rest areas, but I know that it's a lot for her to make this change. And I don't want for her to leave from here and then leave empty and say we had a nice ceremony and then after that, that's it. No, 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 the marriage just that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be going with her one by one so that she can sit down and I tell her constituents and her acts can see. We're not going to get everything done like we wouldn't do for every place, but we're going to do what we can so that the 6th District get their fair share along with every other district that there is. We're going to have some rocky times in the beginning of this year getting into new revenues, dealing with certain disasters. But I guarantee that once we stay true to God's purpose for the vision that we have cast for this territory, by December 2020, you will be telling all of us that it was a good thing that we went in these directions. Just as they say, trust the process. So, Honorable McKeans, I think we'll answer all. I want to welcome you. It. She looks good in green. <laughs> and I want to welcome her to the Boston Islands Party family and to the government and pledge my full support to her in the 6th district. You don't have to worry, E.T. and you all don't have to worry. She will take care of us and we will take care of her. But more so, we will take care of the territory. Now, I do apologize for Honorable Kai Reimer, who is aware of official business. And Honorable Sherry De Castro, who's aware of the official business. So we took a photo with uh, one of them before, which we will share. So if you would use that one, because I know when you leave from here, some of you might say you don't see them and you're wondering something. So please don't go into that. They are aware of official business. They just left. So those members who are here, please, you could come up and they could get a shot of um, those of us who are here now. Welcome. <laughs> and each of them could welcome their, their new member.
Thank you.